it's amusing to me when I look at the title that I gave to the video on the screen, the last one that I uploaded. Those of you who saw it right after I posted it will notice that I actually changed the title. And it was something different before I added a few terms. I had Q instead of the storm. And I didn't have Quantum Leap in the title. And then as I went back and listened to the video to make sure that it was acceptable to be online, as I do with all of my videos, I thought, you know, that storm connection to Cyber Polygon and the World Economic Forum in the context of Donald Trump probably should be in the title in light of the fact that I cover cyber attacks here. And then I thought, and the idea that Donald Trump gave a speech in Eagle Pass, which has so much importance in the context of the April 8th, 2024 Great American Eclipse, I better put Quantum Leap in there because I discussed it a little bit. I said the term and it kind of hints at the ritual that's going on here, how they view the Donald Trump ritual in general as some kind of quantum leap, shifting the United States of America and the rest of the world into something else entirely that is very different from what it used to be. And I didn't think anything of it other than that. Like it was just some neat play on words that I would put in the title after noting that connection in the video. And then I had this thought today, after I had already uploaded the video, of course, to just type in Donald Trump Quantum Leap into my search browser, at which point I realized, oh my gosh, there's a whole thing here with Donald Trump and Quantum Leap that I had no idea of. In other words, sometimes you're led to things in the opposite direction than they occurred. I arrived at that insight from the conclusion of it when he gave that speech on February 29th, 2024, on a leap day in Eagle Pass. But this is something that's been going on in the background for a long time that I'm now becoming aware of that started first last year when Donald Trump started with his messaging for his 2024 presidential campaign. And here you can see the article from Fox News. Trump plans to quantum leap us into the future. And this is the Daily Mail covering the same story. Welcome to MAGA world. Trump wants freedom cities where cars can fly, parents get bonuses for having babies, and huge monuments are built to true American heroes in quantum leap vision for the future. Now, pay attention to the language in this article. It's really fascinating. Former President Donald Trump launched a quantum leap agenda Friday ahead of his appearance at CPAC. He pitched the creation of 10 new American cities with flying cars and lots of babies. Trump said in those cities there would be towering monuments to our true American heroes. Interesting that he used the word towering in the context of everything he is associated with as it relates to 9-11 and those two towers. And the one that they put up in its place being the Gemini man twin himself. And then check out what they wrote down here. Former President Donald Trump looked back to the future Friday, launching a quantum leap, quote unquote, agenda as a part of his 2024 presidential run. This is to say that in spite of all of the videos that I have done on Donald Trump, I don't really pay attention to anything that he says or any of the normal political stuff that's going on. I'm not looking into any of this stuff. Accordingly, I had no idea that the quantum leap term was actually a part of his 2024 campaign. I just came up with that term on my own. I must have pulled it out of the ether somehow and just knew that it was there in a subconscious way and I decided to say it. But yes, this was a term that he himself used just last year to describe his new plan, which he refers to as Agenda 47, and we will get to that part of it as well. But the 
simplistic logical reasoning for the name Agenda 47 is that if Donald Trump is the elected president in 2024, he will be the 47th president of the United States of America. So it's Agenda 47. But as we'll see, like most of the stuff that they put out there, there's much more to it than that. In any event, I was very amused that the writer kind of did a similar thing, perhaps, pulling from uh, his or her subconscious mind, or maybe it's a bot, who knows, uh, maybe the program pulled it from the collective mind that is the internet now and all the data that they load into these programs. And it associated Donald Trump with Back to the Future, time travel, and it led the writer to type out Back to the Future in describing his Quantum Leap agenda, which is a television show that involved time travel where the main character would jump into other people's bodies all throughout time and then do certain things to try and correct or fix something in that time as that person. And maybe now I'm finally starting to see why there was so much time travel resonance around Donald Trump now that I have this information about the quantum leap stuff, it's almost as if they surrounded him with that resonance because they knew they were going to try and time travel, for lack of a better term. They were going to try and take our consciousness as it existed pre-9-11 and send it to another place in the same way that it's depicted in Quantum Leap or Lost or any of these other programs that show you consciousness time travel. You can do this yourself in your own memories and projective imaginations about the potential future. Your consciousness can time travel in the same way, but this is a more literal idea of there being some kind of machine that can actually take your consciousness and send it to your body in the past or send it to your body in the future. And in that way, your consciousness time travels to a different point, but not your actual physical body. And I think that's kind of what is going on here with Donald Trump, where he's this eclipse baby moon child amplifier that is the catalyst to send the collective consciousness into a different time. Which makes sense then, considering the fact that he's so closely tied to 9-11, which was a mega ritual designed to do just that for the new millennia. It was symbolic of what they wanted to transform our minds into. And just like 9-11, in the physical world, Donald Trump is the catalyst and the symbolic representation of that transformation injected into the political system and just in general injected into reality itself as it relates to domestic terrorism and everything that domestic terrorism is being used to change all around us, to turn us into a different state of being almost, to accept a different reality all around us. Oh, this is the new normal, right? The phrase that they brought out during the pandemic, which then ties right back into Operation Warp Speed and how Donald Trump was the president that was in office during the time in which that was being done so that they could associate it with him, given his role. Some kind of actual time travel metaphor taking place. Or a leap in evolution, as it were. From their perspective, obviously. I'm not trying to imply that any of this is legitimate. I'm just trying to describe what it is, possibly. Anyways, the quantum leap thing uh, gets deeper with Donald Trump. Because there's this episode of the series Quantum Leap called It's a Wonderful Leap that aired on April 1st, 1992. It's a little confusing because they have the date of the leap 
that is associated with each episode. In other words, where the character leaps to. And then they have the actual date here when it aired on TV. So it aired on April 1st, 1992. And then the plot was centered around the day, May 10th, 1958. Because that's when he leaped to in the timeline. First of all, let's note that April 1st, 1992 is April Fool's Day. And that is interesting because this episode features a young Donald Trump along with his father, Fred. There's a scene in the back of a New York taxi, of course, where Trump and his father get in to the main character's taxi that he's driving. And they have this little exchange where it's implied that the main character gave Donald Trump the idea for Trump Tower in New York City and essentially created Donald Trump, maybe unintentionally. And by the way, just so you know, this episode is available on YouTube. You can go watch the scene. But I'm not going to play that now because it's kind of irrelevant to to what I want to get into, other than the fact that I would love to watch the whole episode at some point and see if there's any eclipse resonance or imagery in there. But I can't find the episode online right now, so I wasn't able to watch it. So it's interesting to me that Donald Trump is featured in this episode of Quantum Leap, and it airs on April 1st, 1992, which is April Fool's Day. Kind of hinting at the idea of maybe this whole Donald Trump thing is some kind of cosmic joke that they're playing on us. April Fool's, here comes Donald Trump. <laughs> Get ready. <laughs> you have no idea what we have planned for this guy. And as it says up here, this was season four, episode 18. And incidentally... It was the 71st episode of the series, which is the 17. And we know how Donald Trump is associated with 17. Through the year that he was elected president, 2017. And also QAnon, which is the 17th letter of the alphabet. But then also pay attention to the fact that this episode just happens to be 47 minutes long. Remembering that Donald Trump would later describe his plan for his 2024 presidency as the 47th president to be a quantum leap. <laughs> Very interesting all of this stuff works, right? And the date, May 10th, 1958, is interesting because there's another episode of a show called Trackdown that is titled The End of the World, and this episode aired May 9th, 1958. There's no time travel involved. This is just an actual TV series that was on the air in 1958. But the day that this episode aired was May 9th, 1958. It's titled The End of the World, and it's just an interesting coincidence that this Quantum Leap episode was centered around May 10th, 1958, one day later than the date that this The End of the World Trackdown episode takes place. And I realize I haven't explained why this means anything. Well, it's because the plot, as it says here, Hobie has to deal with a snake oil salesman selling the end of the world to a town filled with gullible people. Well, it just so happens that the character who is the snake oil salesman was named Walter Trump. And this is the actual episode that someone uploaded to YouTube. You can go find it if you want. I didn't watch it yet, but it's very interesting to me that the first image of the episode is kind of this crescent moon that almost looked like that Fermata image that is kind of evocative of an eclipse. If you view this kind of merging into that. But also, this is common imagery for the moon. And you have that right next to a target. <laughs> so it's kind of like the eclipse is the target in the context of Walter Trump 
and the end of the world, as it were. Also remembering that Donald Trump has all of that resonance to Donnie Dark O, Dark O, the Eclipse, and the end of the world is very heavily featured in that movie. But it's fascinating how they describe the plot down here. The end of the world received considerable media attention after Donald Trump was elected president of the United States in 2016, nearly 60 years after the episode first aired. In the episode, a rabble-rousing doomsayer named Walter Trump comes to town. He scares the townsfolk with talk of an impending disaster and claims to be the only person who can save them by building a wall. He also threatens to sue Hobie when accused of dishonesty. By the end of the episode, he is arrested as a con man and fraud. I mean, this is playing out almost exactly how Donald Trump's presidency uh, played out the first time around. The coincidental similarity to Donald Trump's name and proposed border wall was noted. A Vanity Fair author wrote, Of all the books and movies that presage the rise of our reality TV president, none are so eerily on the nose as this once obscured 1958 episode of Trackdown, in which a demagogue named Trump attempts to convince a town that only he can save its citizens by building a wall. The San Francisco Chronicle stated the character's speech is so similar it almost seems as if Donald Trump borrowed some catchphrases from Walter Trump. Very interesting tie-in to Donnie Darko, though, with the End of the World title and the Eclipse Resonance. And it's interesting, I'm thinking right now about time travel and just those themes in general, and Tesla was always kind of rumored to be involved in that kind of research. And as I'm sure all of you know by now, Trump's uncle, John Trump, was an MIT professor and the FBI actually came to him and requested that he went to Tesla's hotel room after he died to examine all the stuff that he had there to make sure no one could have discovered any kind of secrets along those lines. They were coming at it from a national security perspective, at least that's what they tell us. I'm sure whoever knew about these types of things was monitoring Tesla closely and they were in the hotel room before anyone else in an official capacity was there. That was probably done well before this official visit took place that would kind of put everyone's mind at ease. And they chose John Trump for that. This took place in 1943, about three years before President Trump was born. And I just bring up that Tesla John Trump reference in the context of time travel because for a long time there's been this backstory along those lines as it relates to Trump literally being some kind of time traveler where you have the Baron Trump novels written in 1889 and 1893 by American author and lawyer Ingersoll Lockwood as it says here they remained obscure until 2017 when they received media attention for perceived similarities between their protagonist and U.S. President Donald Trump. Knowing what I know, I would lean less into time travel and more into just how far back are they planning these types of things. Uh, as we can see with events like 9-11, it's all pretty far back before the event actually transpires at least as far as we know. We can only go by what they put in the media. Who knows when they were strategizing the whole thing behind the scenes, and then a part of that strategy is putting the things in the media, right? So we have no idea how long they're actually planning this type of stuff. But I got to bring this up if I'm going to talk about Donald Trump and time travel, just to be thorough. Anyways, reading further here, in July 2017, the books were rediscovered by Internet Forum users and then by the media who pointed out similarities between the protagonist and then U.S. President Donald Trump. Jamie Fuller from Politico notes that Baron Trump lives in a building named after himself, Castle Trump, while the real-life Donald Trump had lived in Trump Tower for decades. Furthermore, Donald Trump's youngest son's name is Baron Trump. Obviously, he named his child Baron, which is the most glaring evidence of the connection here. But this is even crazier. Chris Riotta noted in Newsweek that Baron Trump's adventures begin in Russia. Riotta also mentioned another book of Lockwood's, 1900, or The Last President, 
in which New York City is riven by protests following the shocking victory of a populist candidate in the 1896 presidential election who brings on the downfall of the American Republic. What do I even say after that? It's kind of like if you've watched every video I've done on this whole 2017-2024 Great American Eclipse thing, that should have registered in your mind like some kind of fireworks going off or something along those lines. Now, will he actually be the quote-unquote last president? I don't know. We'll see what happens if he gets elected in 2024. That could very well be the case. But is he the president who brought on the downfall of the American Republic in a very official way? Yes, of course. That He is very much doing that as we speak. Your guess is as good as mine what this all means. But anyway, going back to John G. Trump, the MIT professor who inspected Tesla's hotel room. Fast forward to Elon Musk, who has all of the same connections through his family that Donald Trump does to the power structure that orchestrates these types of things. He ends up being the front man for a company that they name Tesla. And those Tesla vehicles are a pretty big part of the plot in Leave the World Behind, where the cyber attack hijacks the self-driving Tesla cars and uses them to jam all the on-ramps and off-ramps to the interstate highway system in the United States of America. Now, going to the Agenda 47 stuff, this is actually the first time that I've ever gone to Donald Trump's official website. But when you go down here, he has all these videos on Agenda 47. And before getting into the Masonic stuff with 47, there is an interesting coincidence here where Aleister Crowley, who wrote the Moonchild book, died in December of 1947. Just an interesting coincidence and potential tie-in to Agenda 47, how these things just so happen to align where the moon child, Donald Trump, is poised to be the 47th president of the United States and has this Agenda 47 that he refers to as a quantum leap in the future of America as his campaign promise. But personally, I'm not reading too much into that. So let's move on to the 47 stuff. Oh, first, just noting that there is this Agent 47 video game where Agent 47 is a hitman described as a monotone contract killer without empathy, <laughs> which many people would describe Donald Trump as. And Agent 47 travels around the world to execute hits on various criminals that are assigned to him by his handler, blah, blah, blah. The character takes his name from being the 47th clone created by various wealthy criminals from around the world. But then we go to Euclid's 47th problem. This is from the Grand Lodge of Ohio and freemason.com. So this is coming directly from Freemasons describing Euclid's 47th problem. Built upon the foundation laid by the operative Masons, Freemasonry and geometry are inextricably linked. Stonemasonry harmoniously unites rationality and creativity, allowing the most skilled craftsmen to wield mathematics and imagination to create awe-inspiring structures. When we come to understand and apply geometric law, the patterns and forms of nature reveal themselves, and so we see the brilliance of the grand architect's creation. By the time a candidate becomes a master mason, he will have encountered several geometric applications and symbols, including the square and the compass. The 3-4-5 right triangle is among these essential symbols, demonstrating Euclid's 47th problem. Euclid's proof is illustrated in the third degree, emphasizing that Masons should appreciate the arts and sciences. Every cipher in Freemasonry enjoys a rich history and more profound significance, and the 47th problem is no different. 
To understand how this symbol came to be, let us first learn about the man behind the geometric law. The father of geometry. Little is known about the life of Euclid, including his appearance or lifestyle. As such, any rendering of him is the work of artistic imagination. We know that he was a Greek mathematician who lived in Egypt around 300 BCE. He earned the moniker Father of Geometry for writing one of the most influential mathematical books in all of history, Elements. I won't even try to pronounce the Greek version of that. Through Elements, Euclid captured much of the mathematical achievements of ancient Greece. Building upon his predecessors, such as the great Pythagoras, the tome served as the primary textbook for teaching mathematics, especially geometry, for over 2,000 years. It is a collection of definitions, postulates, propositions, and mathematical proofs. The text was so important that it was among the first mathematical works printed via the printing press in 1482. It is estimated to trail only the Bible in editions published since its initial printing. Euclid's elements present many groundbreaking mathematical principles, including that of Proposition 47 in Book 1. Also known as Euclid's 47th Problem, or the Pythagorean Theorem, establishes that in any right triangle the square of the two sides connected to the right angle is equal to the square of the third side called the hypotenuse. And I promise you, this will not be a math lesson because I'm really bad at math. <laughs> I'm not even going to try to get back into understanding this kind of stuff. We'll leave that uh, for another time, let's say. But the point of getting into it is in this paragraph right here. For architects and craftsmen, this knowledge is invaluable. Operative masons created this triangle using a length of rope divided into 12 equal segments. This rope allowed them to create a right angle quickly and accurately as a template for the mason's square. Understanding how to form a perfect square is of the utmost importance in stone masonry. In antiquity, when expertise was limited to the few, it may have been one of the genuine secrets of a master mason. For those of you who don't know, there's a difference between operative masons, which trace back to actual real stone masons, and the societies that they formed together, almost like a union, you could think of it. And they held all the secrets of geometry that helped them build all the architecture in ways that the general public wouldn't be aware of. And then it kind of morphed into what is referred to as speculative masonry, which is all the stuff you can find in Manley Hall's books and Albert Pike's books, things along those lines with heritage that traces back to Jewish mysticism and the Kabbalah. But moving on to another website from a 32-degree Freemason, also from a lodge in Ohio. While performing internet-based research on the symbolism of the point within a circle, I happened upon a link to a website which offers various mathematical proofs of Euclid's 47th proposition. One of these proofs immediately caught my eye since it had been developed by Brother James A. Garfield, the 20th President of the United States, and a Freemason. Brother Garfield's elegant and quite famous proof involves the construction of a trapezoid, which is divided into three separate right triangles. Two of these triangles are congruent, and one is an isosceles triangle. Garfield demonstrated through algebraic means that the area of the trapezoid is equal to the sum of the areas of the three right triangles, and thereby proved that c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Um, uh, my eyes just crossed over. I don't even know what I just read, so we'll just pretend like that didn't happen. But I just wanted to read that part for the... Little known fact of history that James Garfield was a Freemason. And as the Freemasons tell it, for that reason, the actual compass in the logo is set to 47 degrees. And while I have this up here, it's a good time to remember that Elon Musk changed Twitter to X and he changed the logo to the X that has the thick bar and then the skinnier bar that really looks like the intersection of the compass with the square. And as I said when I first went into that, I don't know if that's anything significant other than the fact that as you can see from James Garfield being a Mason and a lot of the original founders of the United States of America itself being Freemasons, there is a very large Masonic tradition in this country as it relates to 
the establishment of it and the control system as a whole. So in the context of the ritual destruction of the thing they built, it's interesting to me that Elon Musk rebranded Twitter to X, showing a square and compass in that context as X, the social media site, becomes a place where quote-unquote right-wing domestic terrorism is radicalizing people and is a growing danger to democracy, as it were, quote-unquote. In other words, he's playing his role in that way, which then connects into Tesla being featured in Leave the World Behind and the actual depiction of the destruction of the United States via a cyber attack in that film, as that then relates back into these two eclipses and Donald Trump being the personification of 9-11 and his role in facilitating the quantum leap of America into something else. I guess it depends on how you look at it, right? You could look at it as a ritual destruction, but something always rises from the ashes of destruction, and that's where kind of all the Phoenix imagery is coming in through this eclipse, where it's a quantum leap into something else. So Donald Trump is facilitating both. Possibly through two presidencies, right? It's the first presidency designed to establish the foundation to destroy what America used to be in a very literal way. And then with the second eclipse and his second term, potentially, it's more of the Phoenix part of the ritual, the quantum leap into something else. And of course, everything is doublespeak. I don't actually mean he's going to uh, transcend America into some utopia. No, of course not. That will always be the case, that it's not what they say it is. I'm just getting at the symbolism here and what they're trying to portray through it. As it relates to the future of the country I live in and the rest of the world in general. Based on what I know about this stuff, I'm sure you can do a deep dive on 47 and find all kinds of wild connections to that number, but I just want to keep this focused on Donald Trump and Quantum Leap for the time being. Though now that I'm thinking about it, I pretty much got to everything that I wanted to get to. So let's go back to the Quantum Leap stuff. In light of everything I've gone over now and return to the fact that this Quantum Leap episode that featured Donald Trump was 47 minutes long. It aired on April Fool's Day in 1992, and it was the 71st overall episode in the series. Actually, now that I'm looking at this, I'm remembering that the 911 call for Matthew Perry was at 4.07 p.m., or 47. And then he was later pronounced dead at 4.17. So the two times for Matthew Perry's death that I have right here are really tied into Donald Trump now in a deeper way. With the 47, and the 47 in... The second time, plus the 1028 in the movie 17 again, that further ties into QAnon and its first post on 1028-17, or the same day that Matthew Perry died on 1028-23. And obviously it was a 911 call with that 911 resonance because they changed that to our emergency number in 1968, which is the year that Chandler Bing's birthday was on April 8th, the same day as this total solar eclipse in 2024, known as the Great American Eclipse, that has all of this other symbolic resonance to Donald Trump and the ritual destruction of America, in addition to the quantum leap now, in addition to the leave the world behind destruction of America resonance that Matthew Perry has, to that film via the central importance of friends in that plot. And then to top it all off, at his funeral, he plays this song by Peter Gabriel that has a music video with a full eclipse as the imagery. Additionally, remembering that 102823 was a partial lunar eclipse date. 
I don't want to go over the whole video again, but it's hard not to get into it once you start, uh, especially when there's more information tying into it as well. But when I used the term quantum leap, I had no idea that there was this quantum leap episode out there that featured Donald Trump. I was just going off of the alleged coincidence that he gave a speech in Eagle Pass, Texas, which is the first town that this great American eclipse will go through on April 8th on a leap day in a leap year. So I was just thinking of quantum leap in that symbolic context. I didn't have any idea that he had actually been in a quantum leap episode, or at least he was depicted in the episode, right? It was actors playing the Trump family. And then on top of that, I had no idea that Trump had actually used the term quantum leap itself to refer to his vision for his 2024 presidency if he gets there. As these things tend to go, if he actually gets to be the president of the United States again and is the 47th president, and he ran on this idea of Agenda 47, it wouldn't surprise me at all if we look back in hindsight and his Agenda 47, as they coordinate everything through him, would end up being the successor to Agenda 21 and Agenda 2030. <laughs> they just wouldn't tell you that out in the open. No, it would be sold as this grand utopia that he's going to turn the country into. This great quantum leap that he's going to produce as the next president of the United States. I had no idea that he actually used the term quantum leap, but knowing how these things work, we can see why he did that given what was pre-programmed in this episode of the 71st Quantum Leap on April Fool's Day, 47 minutes long. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. And then it was the day after, May 10th, 1958, was the day after this episode of The End of the World from the series Trackdown, which aired May 9th, 1958, and very closely mimicked Donald Trump's presidency through the character Walter Trump. I had no idea that any of this stuff was out there when I added Quantum Leap to this title. It's crazy how this stuff works uh, along those lines. But I believe that is everything that I wanted to get to, so hopefully this wasn't a complete waste of your time. I would settle for a partial waste of your time, but uh, seriously, hopefully you got something out of this. And uh, that's it for now. Later.